is he going? So today on Big House Sport, we are back for week number five of In The Sheds. Big, big show today, guys. Really, really massive show that I'm really looking forward to. We've got our first real special guest on today, and that is William Zillman. William Zillman used to play for the Canberra Raiders and Gold Coast Titans, mainly for the Gold Coast Titans. He played from 2008 to 2016, or 2017, my bad. And he also played for the Raiders for about two, three seasons before that. So I'm really looking forward to, to having that, that NRL insight, that actual player insight that we're going to be discussing today. I'm here with co-host Shells, and we've also got Archie this week. He's jumped on because Fletch isn't here. Archie jumping on in Fletch's place, and uh, looking forward to a really, really good show. It's going to be a little bit different this week, because usually we do three sports, as you guys know. It usually goes three sports, open floor, and then we finish up. But because we've got a special guest on this week, I thought, you know what? Let's have a little bit of an interview. Let's interview Zilly and get, get a few yeah, insight, and then now uh, we're going to have a little bit of a game as well. We're also going to be talking about the NRL and the NBA playoffs, followed by, obviously, open floor discussion. So anyway, guys, let's jump straight in. Let's talk to the boys. This is going to be an absolute ripper. Hello, boys. We are here in the Sheds Week 5. Obviously, we've got Shells and Archie here. Say hello, boys. How are we again? How are we? Oh, I am going pretty well. And obviously, we've got a massive guest over here. We've got our first special guest, William Zillman. How are you, big fella? I'm um, very good. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me on tonight. Yeah, That's it's all great, awesome to have you on. Awesome to, to, to get a little bit of time away from your busy life schedule. Yeah, it is. Yep. No, it's um, it's going really well. And, and I'm enjoying life after football at the moment. But there's obviously uh, certain parts of it that I miss a lot. So it's... Um... Yeah, exactly. But just before we get into it, guys, just to let you know, for the viewers out there, if you're specifically here for um, like the interview game segment or like to the, the NRL or the NBA, I'm going to be putting timestamps down below the, in the pinned comment below so you can jump to exactly what you want. But also, guys, just want to let you know we are on SoundCloud now. So if you guys want to listen to us in the car or the radio or um, make it a lot easier for you than we are also on SoundCloud, so that's a pretty big step. Blasted on the train. Oh, blasted on the train. Make sure, everyone's <laughs> listening to you in the shed. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is actually we when when Zilly jumped on just now, he sounded like he was in Afghanistan. Did <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit of career change? <laughs> career change. He's gone from Gold Coast Titans rugby league player to Afghanistan yeah. uh, Australian defender. I love it. <laughs> Anyway, boys, let's um, let's jump into the uh, first segment of today's show, which is going to be a bit of an interview with the big fella over here. I asked the fans the other day on the Beak House Sport Facebook page if they had any questions. So we'll, we'll go through those first, and then we're going to get to a few questions of our own. So Zilly, you ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do it. Good stuff. Alrighty, so from Nathan Bodie, hopefully I pronounced that right, uh, we've got, how is uh, Will's boxer dog going, and why are they the best breed in the world? Do you have a boxer dog, man? <laughs> I do, I do, yeah. Um, five-year-old female boxer, yeah. Oh, gee, she's going really well. She's, uh, uh, yeah, she comes everywhere with me out to the farm every day, and she's a real goer, actually. Her name's Bonnie, but, um, yep, they're a beautiful breed. They're, she's got a beautiful temperament. Um, they can be a little bit silly, but they're very lovable. They're great with kids and, and great with everyone, so it's um, that's sort of why I chose to get a boxer. <laughs> yeah, I love how I love how this person knew that. Like, I love how this person knew the, the specific breed of dog that you have. Well, it's a bit creepy, but... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Tom Collingwood has come out and said, what was it like playing alongside Scotty Prince, uh, Matty Rogers, Preston Campbell, and uh, and being captain of the club? Yeah, look, it was... It was a fantastic uh, time in my life. I mean, I you know I came up to the Gold Coast. So I was fairly young, 21. So to be able to play along guys like that, uh, alongside guys like that, you know, also um, players like Luke Bailey, um, you know, Mark Minicello, Anthony the Frankie. I mean, we just had so much talent in the side, and, and guys that had done so much in the game already. So for a young for a young guy who's sort of you know, only in his um, third year of NRL to be able to play alongside guys like that, it was it was really really special for me, and, and certainly you know a period at the Titans that I'll I'll never ever forget. Uh, and oh, and the captaincy look such an honour. It's such an honour to you know captain any any football club, um, you know, uh, but to captain an NRL team and and uh, you know the Gold Coast Titans, you know, a team that I've got to play for for a decade. It was um it was a very special thing for me and. You know, it's, uh, you know, again, something I'll hold very close to my heart the rest of my life. Yeah, exactly. Like, you obviously see uh, see 
everyone who who plays rugby league as a as a young kid or football any sport really what you what you aim to 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 achieve is a prof, being a professional star and uh, you've you've been able to to reach that that peak and plus the captaincy which would really be a special achievement because it means that out of everyone in the club you're the one who they feel that can lead the way which is which is a really big benefit to 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 what you did in your career and it, it says a lot yeah and look it, it it that's why it's such a it was such a great honor I mean because when I was a, when I was a young guy coming through I looked up at you know the captains that I had and you just think wow well, you know like these guys are there's something special and the reason they're in that position is because they're not your average football player um, you know they're leaders on and off the field and it's you know so for me to be thrust into that position and, and feel like I had the backing of the coach and the playing staff and the club in general was um, you know a very humbling feeling for me. Yeah, look, actually, just just specifically on that, I'm gonna. I was gonna ask this question myself, but we also did have a a viewer ask this question because just around the the specifics of like at the club, Corey Gregory said, "How did you deal with all the negativity from su- the supporters at the club, and what did you gain from it to better yourself?" Because obviously, sometimes when um, you're not performing as well as as the fans expect you to, there's a lot of there's a lot of hate towards yourself and how do you get past that how do you deal with it and and push yourself to go out in that field and perform your best despite the fact that all the fans are just like you know uh, what's he still yeah. doing at this club yeah yeah I mean it's one part about rugby league that I guess it's just it, it's part of the game I think it doesn't matter what club you go to you're going to be confronted with it at at you know you know whenever the team's um playing poorly it, it look it is a bit disappointing to be honest I think um but at the same time there's a bit of a disconnect because it's very hard for the for the um fans to know exactly what it is that we go through day to day yes. um you know they, they just see us running out on the footy field and and having you know playing this awesome sport of rugby league and um so it, there is a bit of a disconnect there I, I think it's you know I find that when you get fans who who really um, really involve themselves in the game and they want to come and watch us at training and things like that, they, they get a better, better understanding of what actually goes in to producing a football team and, and they see that there is not one player out on the field each week who isn't wanting to give his best for, for the club, you know. Like, everyone has off days. It doesn't really matter what career you're in. Um, but I guess, you know, that, that, that's the problem with the professional sport, isn't it? You're, you're on a stage and everyone's watching you have a bad day. So, yeah. Um, you know, can, I just say something? can I just say something, Will? For someone that is the sports science, because I do sports science, and I've just recently got an internship with the NRL with training the referees. And then, oh, yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Yep. So, we um, from Western Sydney um, University. So, basically, there's a lot. Yeah, for the fans that don't know, there is a lot from just the sports science people. Yes. Me training these guys, just how they wake up, have their food, yeah. warm them up properly. They get an yeah. hour and a half training session done, two hours, depending on what it is. They got to yeah. eat good. We track everything, and then it never stops. They're always watching video analysis, learning about yes. the game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's not much downtime. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I've heard Matt Cooper speak about this before. His favorite day of the week was Sunday night when yes. he just didn't have to think about football for about yeah. four or so hours. So yeah, I understand yeah. where you're coming from, um, from that professional mm-hmm. sense. There's so much more than we run on and we play footy on a uh, Saturday night or something like that. There's just so yeah. much yeah. going on in training, learning plays, and then someone gets injured and you step yep. into another position. Like there's just so much going on. There is. And and like, and on top of that, the, the mental aspect of it, which you, you'd understand yeah. is, yeah, you know, you've got like, you know, you got football players who are just uh, are nervous every single week, and when they run out on the field, like it is, it is a nerve wracking sport to play. It's it's yeah. you know thrilling, but it's it's you know you're playing for your position nearly every single week. You're playing for the pride of the club, the pride of yourself, the pride of your family. You know, and and with social media these days, yes, you know, I've, yeah, I've seen it happen. Like. You've got these young guys who are, say, 20 years old who've played a handful of games. They're living the dream. They are absolutely busting themselves every day for the club, and they'll have a bad game, and they get absolutely ripped on social media. Their friends read it. Their family reads it. And it's just, you know, it's so hard on them. And um, so that, that, look, 
that's just the nature of the beast. But I would say that that is something that it can be very hard, um, more so for the younger guys, as, as you'd understand, you know. Because especially for the money, especially for the money. Some guys like uh, Ponga, he's getting, what, almost a mil a year, like that's big, right. like, yeah. like big yeah. deals, like never used to happen and they get thrown money at 19, 20, 21, yeah, yeah, even yeah. 23, 24, still a young player. And yes, yeah. the way, like a Latrell Mitchell, someone like that, where he's ridiculously good and he might have one off game and then everyone's like, oh, yeah. I told yes. you, over, <laughs> over height. Well, actually, just, just, just. And, and, and then he'll score, he'll score a hat trick yeah, against yeah. the Storm. And they go, ah, just like, yeah. the storm were off that day. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just too right. easy. I just actually, in reference to that, in reference to that, Luke. To be honest, like, in, like with Zill, it was exactly like that. He would, he would be phenomenal, and then he'd have like an off game, and then the fans would just blame everything on Zill. Like, I came to yeah, last captain year, captain as well. They just want to pounce. They want a, someone to blame. Well, last year. Zill was really he he had these this really phenomenal form. Um, I th- I can't remember what games it was. It was kind of at the middle to end of the season. It was really doing it was doing real well. And then all the fans would come out and saying, "Yes, here we go. The Zill of old's back. All this type of stuff. You know, he's he's, he's killing it." And then he has one kind of under par game in a season where look the Titans weren't doing fantastic. Um, so it's not exactly it's not a hundred percent Zill's fault. You know, yeah, like you said, you have your off games. But that's when they decide to, to just hound in and, and blame him as if it was his fault, which I... I like Benji Marshall. I feel like Benji Marshall has experienced that a lot. Like when everyone goes, oh, look, Benji's back. Yeah, and then the Tigers lose two or three in a row and they're like, oh, yeah. I told you. Yeah, that's back. right, yeah. Like it's very easy, yeah. But for me, that that I'm in amongst these guys. I'm training some of these guys. And I see, and I'm about to see with the referees as well, like they work hard behind the scenes yep. every day night morning they're eating right they're doing everything and you know they're still people they still have That's you know right. their, their grandma yeah. struggling with something you know their friends in hospital sick there's still things going on, and then they've got to go out and play yes know? yeah it's yeah. just that they earn money from playing foot a high level of football yeah. and yeah. the nature of the game is people are going to talk about it all the time and just go oh i don't know if he's up to scratch but you know that's what you deal with i I will say i will say on will uh i've known him for quite a few years now he's always been he's always been one of the nicest blokes you'll meet and all the fans say that even Corey, the one who asked that question said i just want you to let him know that we appreciate everything you did for this club people oh that's nice yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah. So he, yeah, he, he was just like saying, I pre- we, we appreciate everything you do for the cl- you did for the club and and uh, how many years you, you you put towards the the game. Uh, that was pretty much what he said. But that's what I want to emphasize. I want to emphasize that I've known you for so long outside of the game that I know how nice of a person you are. You're one of the the most um, down to earth, like dead set real blokes that I've I've met. And it just it it sucks to see that people. You know, they don't care about who the person is. They don't care about how much effort you put into the game. They don't care that, you know, like, you train every single day. You, you you put your heart and soul into that club. It's results-driven, yeah. Driven, yeah, yeah it, it is, it is, yeah. And, um, look, it, it is a shame, but I guess it's one of those things that's it's never going to change. So it's it's the nature of the beast. I, I guess they can use the excuse, oh, you know, you guys get paid so well. and But if I was to say to them, well, how about I pay you really good money for six years of your life but then for the rest of your life you've got buggered knees and a buggered back how does that sound you know what I mean yeah <laughs> it's not all roses you know but um again you know that's just part, that's the nature of the beast and we do it because we love it you know not not because of the money because we love it so exactly you know, yeah just part of it I guess well all right let's 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 jump off that one that's a, that was a really good discussion right there I think that the fans really would appreciate uh that, uh, that that inside knowledge. So let's move on to the next one, which is uh, from Cooper Jobson. We actually had him as a special guest a couple of weeks ago, one of the BK Army, BK Sport fans. Um, he said, yeah. what is one moment that really stands out in your career? Look, it'd have to be uh, probably the Titans' first semi-final win. Warriors? Um, back in 2010 against um, the Warriors at home. Yeah. It was, yeah, that was a really, really special night um, for the club. And, and I just felt, I was so happy that I was there to be a part of it. We um, beat the Warriors and we beat them convincingly as well at home, packed stadium. 
Um, and I think we we I think we finished third or fourth, and we ended up getting a week off. We nearly made the grand final that year, so it was a, it was a really successful year for the club. Only being I think uh, three or four years old at the time. Yeah, that win at home against a packed stadium for the uh, the Warriors was pretty special. That was uh, that I remember that game. Uh, that was one of the first years I was in the Legion, and oh, yeah. that was that was an incredible atmosphere against the Warriors. And funnily enough, that was only one of the only Warriors games that we actually <laughs> that we actually beat them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they've got a good record against us at home, don't they? It, anywhere, really. I think we've beaten them once since 2010, and that was that was. Were you playing that game you, over in New Zealand? Was it Anzac Day? Yeah, yeah, I played it that game. Yeah, yeah, that, that was great. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was phenomenal. I just had a blind, I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I think that that was definitely yeah that was the year that we the Roosters that was the um, preliminary final up at Suncorp that I still despise that we had to take our home game to Suncorp Stadium. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's let's jump on to the next one. Campbell Butler has said the Titans have faced a lot of adversity over the past few years. Was there ever a point where you thought, this is it, the Titans are finished? Or were you positive throughout all the bullshit? Uh, look, I'll, honestly, I'll, I'll be 100% honest with you. I was, I never, it never crossed my mind. I, um, partly because, you know, I mean, we may, I, well, I can only speak on, term, on behalf of myself, but I yeah. made a concerted effort to not read any of it, for starters. It was hard to completely avoid it because you'd have people asking you about it on the street. Um, but I wouldn't ever read anything about it. And throughout the whole process, the back of house of the club, you know, the CEOs at the time and things like that, they were always really good at keeping us up to date. On, I mean, probably not everything, but everything that we needed to know, if that makes sense. So I never, ever felt like, um, you know, the club was uh, going to cease to exist or we were going to have to move or anything like that. And, and it was because we were kept in the loop. Um, with a lot of things, and and at the same time, I just wasn't reading into the crap that all the media were tossing up because you know a lot of it was just hearsay and, and speculation. You know what they're like, so it was, um, yeah, you know, I think that sort of kept us all really positive through that period. Well, that that just on that, that's what I want this uh, in the sheds to be about. That's why I wanted to speak to people like yourself, so that you know uh, the media is, and yes, I guess this is still the media, social media, uh, whatever you'd like to call it. We're but the good guys, we're the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, everyone always says they're the good guys, but you know, I want this to be a, a platform where you know you can um, openly speak and and give insight to, for example, what you just said, and and speak on behalf of yourself, but just not feel kind of that we're going to twist it to make it our own story out of it. Forced, yeah. yeah, like a forced answer or anything like that. We just want a yeah. feeling yeah. behind the scenes because we yeah. don't really see much of that. We just see, yeah, like you said, running onto the field, playing yeah. footy, yeah. give an interview yeah. with. Freddie Fitler and off you go yeah. kind of thing. You know? <laughs> I mean, there was a, there was a lot of stuff that oh, I I know just like as, as well actually you know I might even feel it more than you do Zil because you were saying that you didn't really kind of focus on any of that as as fans we kind of had to put up with it you know what I mean in the same sense I never genuinely thought that the club would fold as the media would continue to to push out there yeah. I never felt it I just always felt positive and that something was going to happen. And obviously it did. We, we got a lot of confidence from, you know, a lot of good people that were around us and around the club at the time. You know, we had a lot of people that didn't want the club, you know, or a club on the Gold Coast to go. Any NRL were a prime example of that. You know, they took over took over for a couple of years. And, and just knowing that we had um, them on our side and, and backing us, you know, that, that sort of gave us, a, you know, a huge confidence boost knowing that, um, you know, we really weren't going anywhere. The Gold Coast is a massively growing area. It's not like they want the club to you know fold they want to push it they want the nrl wants new clubs and new areas like they're not going to just hey massive gold coast area hey sorry guys gonna have to fold like there's a lot of fans up there's a lot of people that want to see footy on the gold coast like blaze he absolutely loves it so i don't see yeah. uh yeah definitely if you've got some good people backing you in the area you've got the gold coast like you need footy up there because there are people that you know, they're not Bronco supporters. They're not as far north as um, the Cowboys. So they need their own team, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And, and you know, we have um, a lot of people move to the Gold Coast, as as you know, Blaze, you know, and, and they've come from somewhere else. So a lot of them may have a, another team that they've supported their whole life. But you find that, you know, the longer they spend up here, they all love their sport and they want to go to the AFL and go to the 
rugby league and and there's and on top of that there's such a great catch it's such a great catchment area for young rugby league players that you know we really need to pounce on that because um you know the future can be really bright if if we re, if we really keep some of those good young players here it's not like queensland have been doing well in state of origin or anything. <laughs> <laughs> well i just want to, i want to sound that the the thing with the titans is that now cuz it, it's only been a club we've only been a club for 10 years or 11 seasons now and it's it's all about the the young kids growing up on the Gold Coast now. Eventually, having that, that 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 connect to the team because, like you said, Will, everyone moves here and they probably already have a team like from Sydney or or, or even Melbourne, New Zealand, even New Zealand with the Warriors. Um, everyone's already got a team when they come to the Gold Coast. So the adults at the moment, it's a very difficult thing. You, well, you can't just really switch. Like a lot of Titans fans now who have connected with the Gold Coast over the years, they did come to the Titans, but. It's a very difficult thing when, yeah, they've already, everyone who's on the Gold Coast has already had their team. So we're waiting for this young group of people to come, the young group of kids to come through. And that's what the Titans, um, I think that's the main reason the Titans have, have really been able to, to keep going and, and stick through with it because I think everyone realizes that eventually these kids will grow up and they will be Titans fans. That's true. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's an exciting time for us. You know, it'll be really good to see that. All right, well, I'm going to ask you a quick question because we've gone through all the... Uh, thanks to the fans for, for shooting in their questions. They were really good. My question is, what was your most embarrassing moment on a footy field? <laughs> oh, God. God. Oh, I think I got a little bit of a head knock once and I got up and I played the ball the wrong way around. That, <laughs> <laughs> that happened the other week, actually. <laughs> That happened the other week. I can't remember who it was. He played it completely like to the opposite direction as if he was the opposite team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly what I did. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll let it be up there. What are, you, what are you doing after right now? Like what are you doing after the league? After, after footy? Yeah. So, yeah, I've got a little bit going on at the moment. I've um, decided to go back to uh, uni. Um, awesome. I've, I've studied a little. I'd studied a couple of degrees while I was actually playing footy and, and I've gone gone back again so I'm a bit of a sucker but um, I'm studying veterinary studies so I'm uh, yeah gonna hopefully um, one day become a vet which is really exciting it's um, fantastic it's a real passion it's a really pa- real passion of mine and and um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it so far and then as well as that I've got um, a, uh, a business that I run out in Crumman Valley training horses I I do a bit of everything I, I, I start horses for people under saddle I um, teach people how to do it I teach people how to ride horses all different ages and and, and a bit of everything so I absolutely love it um, that's where my sort of background has been for the last few years um, so it's you know I'm very blessed to be able to do that every day yeah, that, that, that's fantastic, man. Like, it's, it's good to see, like, you obviously really have a passion for animals. Mm, yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. I, I don't think you could do, uh, well, I couldn't live my life, that's that's for sure, if I didn't, because um, it's just uh, involves animals every day. But, um, yeah, like I said, Blaze, re- really happy about it and, and really enjoying life at the moment. Let's jump into a little bit of a fun segment. We haven't done one of these before on In The Sheds, because usually it's just kind of, you know, sport, sport, sport. But we're going to get into a, a new game called Overrated or Underrated. Now, this is going to be... Very excited for this. <laughs> uh, here we go with Parramatta. <laughs> Parramatta Eels, overrated, underrated. No, so basically for everyone out there who... It's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, we're going to we're gonna pump uh, Will with a few statements or, or uh, teams or plays, and he's just going to tell us whether it's underrated, overrated, or he can even say it's actually rated because sometimes it's just too difficult to say overrated or underrated because, you know, something's just rated as it is. So these are going to be given on the spot. I haven't told Will any of these, and I haven't even told the boys any of these. So these are just going to be... Um... You kept me in the dark. All right. Are you, are you nervous, Will? Yep. All right. <laughs> Straight up. So first one is you being a Liam Hemsworth lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Oh, God. Underrated. <laughs> Oh, I you know I haven't heard that one. I've heard a couple of others, but I haven't heard that. One. Who have you Who have you heard? Um, oh, look, I I can't really see it. So, but yeah, if they think so, I'll just go. I'll go rated. Ah, uh, well, that's actually that that one's actually from me because uh, I've been saying this for years. I don't know why everyone in the Legion doesn't agree with me. No, I don't know why, but I I went on today and I was like. It's not, it, it, he does, man. <laughs> he, he does. It's a compliment, bro. It's a compliment. Own it, mate. Own it. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's a, it's a compliment, all right. Yeah. yeah. Miley Cyrus is all yours, man. Let's start moving on to the next one, and that is Gold Coast Titans. Jeez, that's a hard one. That is a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Oh, again, you know, the, 
poor buggers with all the injuries on the weekend. It seems to happen every year to us. Um, look, I'll, I'll say at the moment, probably just rated, but I, I honestly do believe they've got um, a lot of improvement in them this year. And as in this year, we will see it this year. Yeah. They just need to get on a bit of a roll. Yeah. And oh, yeah, obviously on the weekend. We'll get to that in a minute, though. We'll get to the NRL in a minute. Playing in the rain and mud. <laughs> because this is this is specifically referencing the Titans versus Sharks last year that you were obviously playing in, and that was yeah. uh, more than a little bit of rain and mud. Yeah, uh, playing as an outside back, it's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you've got to rely on your speed to get past players, but uh, obviously the mud doesn't allow that. That's right. Yeah, and you know just catching bombs and and um and you know catching crossfield kicks if you're on the wing and uh you know having to finish off tries you know just there's a lot of things to it that um that make it pretty overrated as an outside back but i think uh well, i remember as a kid it was the it was the greatest thing of all time exactly you know, when you'd had a bit of rain on a friday night and you were running out on saturday morning playing football but yeah it was good all righty next one you're gonna love this one daily cherry evans Easy. <laughs> uh, look, I haven't watched a lot of him this year, but uh, so I might pass that one on. But... Say, it. <laughs> <laughs> Say it then. <laughs> He's Come a Queenslander, on. I can't. He's a fellow Queenslander. <laughs> How much is he on a year? One mil or so. Yeah, a mil. Yeah, well, that's. Uh, I knew I knew you would just would skip over that one. <laughs> All right, next one we'll go with horse racing because I know you love your horses. What are, what are your thoughts on horse racing? Yeah. Oh, look, I'm. Oh, look, I'll say again, pretty boring in middle range. I, I do like. I love my horses. I there's uh there's lots of parts about the horse racing industry I love. There's some parts that probably aren't too flash, but yeah. Um, uh, you know, as as a and appropriately, that, you like it. The way that I tr- like to train the horses, I- I'd actually love to be in it just so that I could make a small difference. You know what I mean? It's uh, yeah. Th- there's lots about it that's really good. You know, like they do treat those horses extremely well, and because they have to. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's like anything. There's a- there's two sides to it, isn't there? There's all yeah. There's always going to be the good and bad when it comes to well, exa- gambling, for example. But uh, there's there's always good good and bad. Like obviously, you've got to love the Melbourne Cup, but yes. Oh yeah, great day. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, we're gonna go with, and I bet he's gonna skip over this. I bet he's gonna skip over this. This is just a bit of fun, man. Just a bit of fun. Jared Hayne. <laughs> oh, of course you'd ask that. Yeah. I know what you want him to say. <laughs> and did not be baited by him. <laughs> hey, hey, plane's ready for time. Just to let you know, Will, Archie is a Parramatta fan. So that's the, the main reason I asked that is because I knew that would get grind his gears. <laughs> oh, right, right. Um, you know what, Jared? Um, I actually got along pretty well with Jared. He, uh, he was one of the only guys who uh, went out of his way to physically actually ring me when I announced my retirement to say congratulations on a great career. That's awesome. And... You know, and I've played for 13 years, played with a couple of hundred different players, I'd say, on that time. And, and he was one of three to ring wow. me. Wow. Actually, you know, like, I've got a lot of text messages, don't get me wrong, but yeah. he went out of his way to ring me. And, and I really respected him for that. Football wise, look, I, you know, he, he's obviously he's been, you know, amazing in, in the past. And, and he may not be in, you know, career best form at the moment, but, um, you know, he's he, he might be dealing with a lot, boys. I, I honestly couldn't. Couldn't comment on that, but um, yeah, I really respected that he went out of his way to do that for me because uh, it, it meant a lot to me. Yeah, that's phenomenal, man. That's that's a really good thing, and I'm uh, I'm glad you kind of mentioned that because, as in the media, obviously he gets a really bad knock. Uh, all we hear is uh, Jared the 49er, Jared Hayne this. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, that comes with the whole negative media stuff that we spoke about before. All righty, boys. Well, let's move into the first actual 4040 discussion of the of the, the podcast, and that is the NRL. So we've got uh, Zilli here. So I'm going to go through the scores first of the last week, and then we'll just get into a little bit of a discussion. So first up, we had the West Tigers, 20, beating the Cowboys, 12. Newcastle Knights, 18. Penrith Panthers, 29. The Canterbury Bulldogs, 20. Parramatta Eels, 12. New Zealand Warriors, 0. Sydney Roosters, 32. The Melbourne Storm, 28. Gold Coast Titans, unfortunately, 14. Manly Seagulls, 38. Brisbane Broncos, 24. South Sydney Rabbitohs, 24. The St. George Laura Dragons, 10. And finally, the Raiders, 16. Cronulla Sharks, 24. First up, boys. I knew Luke was going to uh, have a bit of a laugh at me for this. The Tigers, uh, Tigers win against the Cowboys despite 47 missed tackles. 
Look, Blaze had been talking to me all week saying, watch the Tigers just get absolutely smashed. Never said that. Never, ever said that. Never, ever said that. <laughs> yeah, you did. No, I didn't. I just said the Tigers are not making the eight. I'm, it's my, like, I'm just saying it. That night at half time, you were even like, oh, 47 missed tackles, rah, 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 whatever you're going on. Never about. said that at half time. Like, the scoreboard. <laughs> you're not wrong. How did they do it? How did they do it? I don't know. How, I don't know. Cowboys, I don't know. What? I don't know. I don't know what's going on over there. Brilliant response, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Cowboys for me, man. It's just, I thought that I, in my preseason predictions video, I tipped them to win the comp, but they yeah. obviously, they obviously just, I don't know. They're just all over the shop. They just, they're looking very lackluster. Sometimes I feel like in sport, when you've had your season, like the Cowboys played their fairy tale year last year. Mm. And now it's just, oh, okay, well, we did it without Thurston last year. I think we can just rock up and do it. With- yeah, it's going to be easy with Thurston this know. year. I just, I don't know. It's Is it a bad performance or is it because it didn't seem... Well, I, I watched the game. Cowboys just didn't, they just didn't turn up. The Tigers the whole time were just... It was just a very. It was a game full of mistakes on both ends. What What do you think about the Cowboys this season, Will? Yeah. Oh, look. Everything you guys are saying, oh, I agree with. I, I thought coming into the season they would be hot premiership favourites due to the fact that they basically had the same lineup as last year. They had Thurston back, and they had an Australian front rower in McLean. Obviously, yeah. they lost McLean really early, um, round one or two, didn't they, for the season? So that was a big loss for them, but. Yeah, you know, their, their form's really surprised me as well, honestly. it's Because um, they, they've still got the firepower there, but it's just I guess it's just not clicking for them at the moment. Cowboys, do you guys make, think they make the eight? I'm going to say no. Oh, okay. that's, that's a really hard one to call, but I'm, I've been saying it for the last couple of weeks. I'm still waiting for them to string a few wins together. But I'm, I'm still going to have to say yes, just because they're too good to, to miss it. Yeah, I'm going to go yes too. I think I think they'll string a few together and, and finish the year really strongly again. I've been saying it for weeks as well. I think the Cowboys still make the eight. They're only like they're still three wins out, but there's 15 games to go. So 15 games to go, they they just need three wins to get into that position where they're equal with the top eight. So Raiders are the Raiders. If the Raiders beat the Sharks, which they didn't, um, they, if they won. They could have easily been near the eight, and they lost so many games in the beginning of the year. It's just, yeah, the run of the run home is, you know, the last seven or eight games is where pretty much the top eight you start to really see it. I think. All right, well, let's let's move on to the next uh, next game, which was the Newcastle Knights and Penrith Panthers. The Panthers came out on top, twenty nine to eighteen. My question here, boys, can the Knights win without Pierce? I don't know if they're gonna make the eight. I just. Penrith, I, I think Penrith are a dark horse, to be honest. They're underrated. Are they a dark horse, though? Anything, they're, they're good. Oh. I like them. They're as good. much as I had to say as an Eels fan, I agree. They're good. They have the right people in the right areas. they got Maloney. they got they got a lot of good players just in the right areas. I think they're dark horse. Yeah, I think I, I think they're a good team. I don't, I don't, the reason why I said dark horse with a question mark is because I don't know if they're a kind of underrated. I think they're rated. I think everyone thinks that they're a good opportunity. They're a good chance. The only problem with the Panthers is, though, is that they let these teams, besides the Knights, didn't happen at the Knights game, but besides this game, they let teams get out to a lead and they chase it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you can't win games by chasing leads. So that, that's that's the only question mark behind the uh, behind the Panthers. Uh, the Knights, like, yes, they did win that game against Manly without Pierce, that one game, but in the same sense, it's Manly, it's manly though. Um, and forgive, forgive because the Broncos did get thrashed by them on the weekend. But it's the Broncos too. <laughs> yeah. That's why justice was done. Yep, agree with that. I think um, Penrith. I think Penrith can put on a show. Um, but I, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't want to back them either way at the moment. But um, they've, yeah. they've got the again. They got the firepower to do it. Let's move on to the next game, which was the Canterbury Bulldogs versus Parramatta Eels, twenty to twelve to the Bulldogs. This is why I say the wooden say spoon a wooden spoon playoff. Can I just mention something quickly? How, how dodgy were the calls? Like, oh come on, <laughs> oh, come on, just try, come on, man. not a knock on. I just want to quickly say to to Will Archie's been saying for weeks that Parramatta are going to make the eight. <laughs> no, 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 no. Check this When's out. the hate plane taking off? I, he's injured. All right. I didn't say they'd make the eight. Yes, he did. I said I don't think they'll make the eight, but I can no. see them pushing for it and possibly. 
getting the eight seed. So you said that they'll possibly make the eight then. I That's still think can. they can. Exactly. There you go. You said it. <laughs> we got you, mate. We got you right there, son. I knew you. I would be able to catch you out. <laughs> and the two and the two fairies, real mate. Come on. <laughs> Come on, mate, mate. Like, Gutherson had a phenomenal game, and then look what happens in the 77th minute. He goes to play for Barcelona and misses the ball completely. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring that up. <laughs> Obviously, we're going to bring it up. It changed all that, the that's the whole winning try. <laughs> So, 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 did, so did the rest calls. They completely. Changed. I thought that there was a few questionable calls, but in the same sense, I thought from about I don't know. I thought from about fifteen twenty minutes out that the Bulldogs were going after the kind of opening stanza for Parramatta. I thought the Bulldogs they they performed pre uh, a lot better than they did a couple of weeks back. Like since that Broncos game, they they did change a little bit. Broncos game, they arguably yes, we've already talked about it, but they arguably got a little bit jibbed. Then, uh, then, yeah, as we saw, they, they came out and they beat Parramatta Eels. I tipped Eels. I thought they'd win 13 plus, but obviously that did not happen. But uh, the Bulldogs, just they, just they just don't know how to attack, attack and still score 20 points. They still dropped 20 on the Eels. Either. Eels need a new strength coach or another one. Hint, hint. Um, he ain't coming back. Hey, Semi's not coming back. He's over in France, mate. He's living up the French Riviera. Hey, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he is. <laughs> he's on the beach, mate. He's at Monaco, tax free. He's loving. Did you? Did you? Um. Did you know uh, Semi? Uh. Did you ever get to speak to him, Will? Did Just... you ever have to tackle him? <laughs> oh, maybe once. I think. Yeah, he's, he's big fella, beast, isn't he? God, he's yeah, a yeah. He's a machine. Eh? Oh, he is a machine. I'm <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, freak of a player, freak of a player. Um, let's jump into a pretty massive game that really shocked uh, everyone in the rugby league. New Zealand Warriors zero at home to the Sydney Roosters, who scored thirty-two points. Yeah. Warriors absolutely obliterated at home. At home, by the way. This is where Warriors start start falling down. But this was at home. No one really smashes the Warriors at home. Well, the thing, well, the thing is, is that Roosters as well. Their form has been really shaky uh, this season. They just they don't look anything like the team that everyone thought they would be. And I said, I've said this multiple times now. They're not just going to be able to buy players and then expect everything to click within one season. Thirty-two nil to, uh, on the weekend. I think Latrell Mitchell needs to play State of Origin. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. If he's not picked, then it's not even a know. question. Of course, yeah. Just... <laughs> I thought I thought this was just a uh, this was maybe where the Roosters say we're here to play now kind of thing. Yeah, I, had that feel I about still it, I still know. think they're yeah, challenging they're... for the premiership. I think they'll yeah. still be there ish. There ish. I don't know if they'll win. Any good players, but they got like when you think about their outside backs, like you're thinking uh, Ferguson, Mitchell, uh, Tedesco. Uh, like Kronk, like halfback, like Kiri. There's just so many good players. Warriors, um, about them, been saying it as well for a couple of weeks now, don't know how convincing their uh, premiership credentials are, especially after that. But as well, injuries, but as well. Yeah, but ever since Mannering came back, Simon Mannering came back, it really jolted their consistency. It really kind of put a, a, a I don't know how to call it. He kind of, he's the captain. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he's the captain. And I don't know what happened. He he said before coming back, I hope I don't mess around with this team's uh, the way that they're performing. And then it, it just yeah. did. <laughs> well, he saw what happened. <laughs> All right, let's jump on to the Melbourne Storm versus Gold Coast Titans match. First one of the double header. Melbourne Storm came out 28-14. What I want to say, though, I was at this game. I did the game day experience vlog for this. Titans were brave, but because of the injuries, it absolutely killed us. Yeah, no, I thought they were really good. Um... I was really proud of them. But, yeah, I, I mean, those injuries, again, you know, they ended up – they finished the game with nothing on the bench. And it's mm. – um, you're really, you're really fighting an uphill bat battle, especially against someone like the Storm, who's that quality. Yeah, exactly. The Storm are just – they just know how to put games to bed. I think, personally, if Ash Taylor slots that field goal at halftime, though, just before halftime, I think it's a much different game. I think we go on with a lot more positivity and a lot more confidence being up seven because it was 14-14 until, like, what was it, 60th minute? Will, when you played the Storm, did you ever think, geez, we're playing the Storm today? Oh, oh look, I think – yeah, I mean, I think if you were being 100% honest with yourself, there's always a an element of, um, you know, you know what you're coming up against with the Storm. That's the thing. They they are just consistent and they produce week in, week out. And they will never, ever, ever hand you a game. And, um, mm. 
you know, so there's always a different mindset coming into a game against them, yeah. You know, I'm one of the Titans to nick that one, eh? Well, we were close, man. We were close. It's just, yeah, the injuries just absolutely smashed us with Proctor How going down. The game when you got or, what, no one on the bench. Yeah, well, Pro- Proctor went down. Uh, who else went down? It was what, Jay Wall, Jared Wallace. These are main players, too. It's not like, you know. Yeah, we all know about the Proctor tackle with Cameron Smith, who's just actually been suspended for two games, I believe. That's going to affect the Storm pretty heavily, especially, I think they come against uh, Manly, who've just actually, well, that's a good transition um, point right there, because the Manly Seagulls beat the Brisbane Broncos 38-24, to in the second game of the doubleheader. Was this a Manly home game, apparently? Yeah, this was a Manly home game. They always bring the, the, the doubleheader. Um, the Storm always get the home game and the Manly Seagulls always get the home game. I thought Manly played well against the Roosters last week, actually. I'll be honest. I thought they were unlucky to win. I thought Uwade played well last week. But this game... <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, Yuwada, Yuwada had a really good game, actually, against the Broncos. Sports he scored a couple. Bet. Sports bet must have been, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, on Fletcher's channel, we do an NRL previews, and I tipped Manly. I said 1-12, and they actually won 13+. plus. They won by 14 points. I never really saw it coming. I was kind of going on the basis that I thought they had a pretty decent record up there, and obviously they did come out on top. I don't think Manly's going to do too much this season, but anyone's speaking about the spoon, it's it's pretty pretty rough to be talking about Manly and the spoon. They've never had it before. I just don't know if... Too many good, uh, right, too many good players. When Jake and Tom want to play... Jeez, they're real good, eh? Mm. Really good. Broncos, will they make the eight? That's my question to you guys. I say no. I no. say no. I yeah, say, I say no. no. Yeah, I'm going no. I don't know what it is. They got obviously they got top origin players like like Oates and will will boy be in it, who knows? No, 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 surely not. No way. No, but I'm saying they got some good players on their team, but I don't know. I just I thought they've you know, the Tigers game that we saw Blaze, the game the other week where they won against the Bulldogs from the kick. Like, that's two wins from just nothing. I mean, they're good. The, the, I don't know. They just... some one. How can you get beaten by Manly by that much when they just haven't... The last five weeks, they've just been awful. Just before we jump across, if you guys uh, haven't seen the Seagulls versus Broncos game day experience vlog, then check that one out. A little bit of a short, quick plug there. All right, so now just the second last game of the round, South Sydney Rabbitohs 24 beating the Dragons 10. Are the Rabbitohs premiership contenders? <laughs> the choke thing in the memes I've seen. People go, oh, they're choking now. People are like, oh, they're top of the table and choking. Ha, huh, that's pretty funny. But, but as we've seen in the past. Well, last year they were top at round 11. I still think they're premiership favourites, but Rabbitohs. So they just have so much going forward. Like, offensively, the definitely one of the best teams in the league. I don't think anyone really expected them to, to be like this, though. No, <laughs> no <certainly didn't. laughs> at all. What do you What do you think on the uh, on the Rabbitohs? Will do you reckon they're a premiership contender? Not really. Look, I, I think they they were really good on the weekend. Um, I just think there's at least three or four teams for me in front of them that I think yeah we'll, we'll pip them at the end. Obviously, they're they're definitely top top eight contender and potentially top four contender. But I just I don't think they'll quite have the legs to make the premiership. Yeah, who who do you who would be those four teams? Look, I, I wouldn't. Be surprised if they snuck in four, four or five. Um, I think the storm will be hard to beat again. I think, um, I think St George will be up there as well. Yeah, Penrith. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a bit of a dark horse. Even, even the Tigers are a bit of a dark horse on their day. They're going really well. I'm enjoying watching them play footy actually. <laughs> yeah, see, Blaze, everyone's loving them. <laughs> <laughs> Tigers and, and, and I guess the Roosters. You know, like if they if they end up firing, they'll be extremely hard to beat. But it's just whether they can put it together with all the new players. I guess. All right. Well, to finish off the NRL for this week, the Canberra Raiders against the Cronulla Sharks in an absolute thriller. To be honest, I watched this game. 24-16 to the Sharks. Right. This is standard Canola. This is just wild because Sharks have so many injuries. Yeah, I don't, look, look, it shows you the quality of the team. They, well, they they are a quality team. Like I said, I don't know if they're going to be pushing too hard for the, the Premiership, but they're going to make the eight. Oh, no, on. seriously, I, I don't think they're going to... I don't think they have I what it's... I think they'll make the eight. I think they'll make the eight. But yeah, injuries, are, what's going on? Look, Canberra, Canberra Raiders aren't a team that, you sh- like, that people should be like, wow, okay, we've beat the Raiders, now we're serious contenders the Raiders are you know they know how to attack and 16 points is actually their lowest amount of points they've scored this season so it's all about if you can score the points to beat the Raiders because the Raiders for me have always been a team that can score points Will you used to play for the Raiders is that the feeling you got yeah oh I mean we um we always had 
Well, you're right. They've always had some some good strike weapons out wide as well, you know, and, and then and they've had you know these good halves the last couple of years as well that are you know good runners of the ball as well. And but um, yeah, no, look, it, it's it's interesting. It's a really good point. I, I think they are a great attacking team. I think what will um, cause them to fall short this year is their defence. Zegiaro is so underrated. So, yeah, he's good, he's isn't he? He's so good, isn't he? Just he's so nippy and annoying to play against. Love it. Well, that's going to wrap us up for the NRL segment of the show. So well, let's move into discussion number two, which is the NBA. Zilli obviously doesn't know too much about the NBA, so he's probably not going to say anything during this, but uh, it's mainly just myself and Archie and Shells pops in a little bit. So first off, obviously, it's the conference finals time, and we've only had one game so far. First conference final um, series is the Boston Celtics versus the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the second is the Houston Rockets versus Golden State Warriors. So pretty much what everyone kind of said at the beginning of the season, before the season started, everyone was saying, you know, because Kyrie was there, Gordon Hayward was there, that the Boston Celtics would be here. When Kyrie went down, people said no. Nah. When Lord Gordon Hayward obviously went down, people still thought it was possible. But without those two, without a big man there, no one's really thought that it's possible. And then they went and they beat um, the Milwaukee Bucks. And no one gave him a chance. I didn't give him a chance. I, well, we gave him a chance, Archie, but we didn't say we didn't think they'll get through. Yeah. Then they went and they got through that. Then they went and got, went, played the 76ers and an experience. came out and just kind of fell apart. Ben Simmons, you know, didn't turn up. He's young. He's a rookie of the season. You know, that's just what that's. It, it, we it just we expected too much. Expected too much from the 76ers. Next season, they're going to be phenomenal. Now that the uh, they come up against the Cavaliers. Can Boston continue to prove the critics wrong? Well, it's, it's happening again. Before this game, I would have said, no, no chance. Like, LeBron's going to turn it on. Say no again, then. In the playoffs. <laughs> and, and, now, and now they've just gone and beat him. 108 to 83. You just can't tell. Brad Stevens, what a coach. It's like he, He's the next great. Phil Jackson and then Greg Popovich. Brad Stevens is the next great coach. I'm calling it here. What I want to say on Boston is that they find it very difficult to win. Like, yes, they did prove it wrong in the Philadelphia 76ers, but I think it was more down to the 76ers. They loved... They can really dominate at home, which they did today at the Garden. But when they go away, they don't know how to get the win. And Horford... Horford has just been the man in these playoffs, man. He, without Horford, Boston would no way have gotten past um, Bucks. Yeah, no chance. And he, he's the veteran here, so I think uh, uh, he's really taken it on himself to... You know, to really go above and beyond considering how many players they've got out with injury obviously the two the young bucks they've got on there I think he's really taken it on his shoulders and said yeah I can be the man exactly well they, well, they needed someone they, like you said they need someone to stand up and, and he, he's done that he's, he's, he's stood up for him and he's gotten them to this point and today he obviously had a really crack game too he got 20 points well he had a good game 20 points 6 assists and 4 rebounds but LeBron on the other hand 15 points 7 rebounds and 9 assists very average game on his standards I don't know what it is how many times has he been to the East Conference Finals like and how many times has he he's been the best player? I don't know. He's the he is the epitome of consistency. He is such a good player. He yeah, like we've really sp- has been uh, since that finals against Dallas. He's just been so consistent. Yeah, exactly. And for some reason, it's just he fell apart in this game. I think that. Well, then again, if you look at the paces when the Cavs came up against the paces. He wasn't exactly um, exploding in the first couple of games, no. but then after I think it was the fourth game or the third or four, yeah I think the fourth game the Cavs were down two one, and um, then I think LeBron said in his mind, you know what, we need this, we're going to pump through. I'm going to take the, take the lead because I think he was, I think yes, he's the most dominant player in that team, but I think that he was kind of relying on the fact that a lot of the players around him were still he thought that they were still quality players and that he was kind of joining in with uh, it's hard to explain but I don't think that he was being the man that he needed to be and then he realized it once they were 2-1 down in the paces he was like no nah, that's it I'm taking control I'd agree with that like this really is the first team that um since leaving since leaving the Cavs back in uh, 2010 or 2011 whenever it was that he that he hasn't had a really good roster because you know he obviously had Bosch and and uh, Wade all in the Miami days, and Kyrie and Love. Love isn't performing, though. What's going on with him? Ever since he... Ever since Isaiah, really? He just hasn't been the player he was at Minnesota. Like, he was a MVP candidate at Minnesota, huge scorer. I think he's really... like He, he hasn't been fantastic since he, yeah, he came, but I think he really went downhill after the whole Isaiah Thomas thing. Yeah, I think, I think that had a bad effect on the whole team because they were thinking, all right, like... We're playing all right, and we've got Isaiah Thomas coming back in another 
you know, nearly 30 point scorer, all star. And then what he get? He'd average like 15 points a game this season or something. Really, uh, he was really not up to standard to play in this Cavs team. But what? Is, what's your tips? What? What? What is your tip? What do you think this uh, series ends? Oh God, I, this this is definitely one of the hardest ones to call. I'm gonna have to say Cavs. I'm saving. I'm saying Cavs in seven. I think Boston will really. They'll push it and they'll get the. Oh man, it's hard though. If it goes to seven, Boston get the home court final. Yeah, that's the only thing. That's what I'm thinking. Man, this is a tough one to predict. I think I think if Cavs don't win it in six, I think Boston win it in seven. Yeah, I'd say so. I think LeBron's just got to put his foot down and you know, really carry this team like he has for the whole season. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm saying that I think Cavs will get through. I think Cavs will win it in six. But if they don't win it in six and they let it get to seven, I don't think they're going to beat Boston on home court advantage when Boston have been playing so phenomenal at home this season. Next up, obviously, the big one, Houston. Well, actually, no, it's not obviously the big one because they're both big ones. Houston Rockets versus Golden State Warriors. It's the bigger one. It's the bigger one, yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. What do you think of this one, man? It's difficult to call. I know Luke is all about the whole uh, Warriors that have been there, done it before, but Harden and Paul... This Rockets team, man. Do you think they're going to beat the, the beat the Warriors here? I'd 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 really love to see it. Yeah, just just for the first time in what, what would this be? The last three finals, it's been Cavs versus versus Golden State. I just I really just don't think they can. It's... Like what Luke was saying, Golden State didn't they done that? They got a lot of pedigree. I hate I hate Durant, dude, but that dude is clutch. Like you, we've seen it so many times. Other than that, uh. The seven game series against OKC. Okay, so yeah, I hate Durant. I think he's the best player in that series. I think Harden's definitely had the better season, deserves the MVP, obviously. But as I said last week, but I think Durant is the best player on that court. Yeah, look, I want to say Rockets, and I think that the Warriors, I think the Warriors are favourites, but I, I, I want to say the Rockets because. Like, yeah, one, like you said, it's just been so um, predictable every season with the Cavs playing the Warriors. It'd be really funny if it was Rockets versus Boston in the, uh, <laughs> in the finals. It won't, I don't think it'll happen because, yeah, it's just the Cavs and Warriors, both of that, they've been there, done it before kind of um, feeling about them. I'm, I'm going to say the Rockets, just because they've got a lot of hype around them. I think they're, they've got a decent enough team. They've got, like, not decent enough, they've got a great team. I think they can really match the Warriors for their threes with Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. I think they, they because obviously you've got so many quality players there that, that know how to, to, to put down the threes. Like the, the Rockets, they just smash threes. They're one of the best three teams in the league, aren't they? They have a shitload of good outside scorers, you know, between Chris Paul and James Harden, obviously, and then you've got Ariza can knock him down, Eric Gordon can do the same. Mbar Mute. Other players on that team that are really good. Yeah, and Bar Mute can do it, and obviously Eric Gordon is is yeah. is way up there. So what are you what are you tipping? What what's your uh, what what are you actually going to say the number wise? I think I think Golden State and seven. Golden State and seven. God, I hope Houston winner. Yeah, look, I'm going to say, oh man, this is a difficult one to predict. I'm going to go with Houston in seven. They do have home court final. I don't know if Warriors will be able to. Beat them home court in the uh, away to Houston. Um, that's the only problem. I think the home court final is really key in these two matchups because sure. more more often more more so than than not because uh, the war. I just I I think the Rockets win the seventh game. If the Warriors can get two games up, if they go up like two zero, they win tomorrow and then they win again. I can see the Warriors winning it in f- six. But I think I think it really has to go to seven, and I think that yeah, I think the Rockets are gonna take it in the seventh game. Give us something new, please, please. <laughs> oh, let's see Golden State and Cavs again. Shut up, Luke. <laughs> Shut up, Luke. I just want to quickly say uh, we are going to get into an open floor discussion section uh, over on the Beak House Sport Patron. Usually we put it here, but obviously because we had so much good talk with Zilly about uh, the with the interview and and the game segment, we just aren't able to fit it in this week's in the sheds. So we're going to put it on the Beak House Sport. Patreon page for everyone who wants those behind the scenes footage and extra scenes and, and blooper reels and stuff like that because you know we post that quite regularly on the uh, on the Patreon. So if you guys want to hear what we have to say, uh, what what's the topic going to be this week, boys? And we'll we'll let them know. I kind of want to talk about how Mark Bosnich brought up promotion and uh, relegation in the A League. Oh, perfect. Yes, please. Let's talk about that. All right, let's uh, let's let's bring that over to the Patreon. If you guys want to hear about the the promotion and relegation, then yeah, we're going to jump over there and we'll talk about that. So we'll see you there. I think that's going to wrap us up for today's 
show. Thanks to obviously Shirls and Archie for uh, for coming along again. No worries, no worries mate. Every week, mate. Every week. And we also obviously have the big fella Will Zellman, who's taken time out of his uh, taking time out of his day to jump on the show and and really give us that great insight, which was really really good to hear. What a legend. Thanks, boys. Hey, I really appreciate you having me on. I really do. Uh, Thanks mate, for coming love, on, We'd love to hear Insider. Oh, what? Oh, oh, he's got the car going. <laughs> Afghanistan. Someone's blo- Someone's throwing the bomb at the car. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not my car. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, boys, well, that's going to that's gonna do us for today. If you did like this podcast, please give it a big thumbs up so that we know that you're enjoying this content. We'll obviously be back next Tuesday for another Jam Pack show. If you aren't subscribed to obviously BK Sport yet, then go and hit that low subscribe button. We are going to be at a couple of games this weekend, uh, Broncos Roosters and the Gold Coast Titans. Mate, Zil, you should come to a come to a Legion match. Come, come into the match on the Legion. Get in there, Will. Get, in, get amongst it, mate. Get, amongst it. get the hat and the shades on. Fake <laughs> moustache. <laughs> Alright, boys, well, we're going to jump off. Thanks for that. Alright, catch you later. Shit! <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,